So I have Laura Redding Searing, and um, she's really interesting, and I really like her. But so, her early life, she was born in California in 1839, and she eventually moved to Missouri. And then she got sick, and when she got sick, medicine that she took made her lose her hearing. So that's how she became deaf. And she, so, like, she was born hearing. She went to a public school. She was a hearing child. Her parents are hearing, but whenever she um, lost her hearing, her parents were extremely supportive. And they learned sign language, and they took her out of her public school and into Missouri School for the Deaf. She was living in Fulton. I was super smart, and her parents were basically like, yeah, this is my kid. And this happened, therefore I'm going to take care of it, and we're going to be parents and do what's best for our child. And then, so after she graduated, she um, she was offered a job there to teach, but she was decli- she declined it. And she didn't go to college, and she didn't get married And the reason why she didn't go to college is because she just couldn't because colleges at the time wouldn't allow, wouldn't allow a deaf person to go to their school. And along with that, Gallaudet hadn't, um, made it, made like, basically women weren't allowed to apply for Gallaudet. And and if they did, they'd be denied because they didn't like allow women there. And so... Instead of doing, like, marriage in college, she traveled to Europe, and she met her first husband, and she learned German, French, Spanish, and Italian, and I thought that was really interesting, and it just proves how smart she is, and she did this and did all that, and while she was doing this, she came back, and then whenever she came back, she started writing um, magazine articles and publishing poems underneath an alias, and she, the articles and the poems were basically about sign language and deafness. And she went under an alias at first. And she went under the name Howard. And first of all, that's my dog's name. So I got really happy when I saw that. And second of all, she did it because, well, she's a woman and it's the 1800s. And that's just how it has been. Because women, if they publish something under their real name, they'd be like, that's a woman. And they wouldn't take her seriously. So. And then her impacts. She was, um, she basically believed in oralism and sign language. And either way, she didn't really care. She thought that sign language cool was cool. She thought that oralism was cool. She thought, like, if you spoke and sign, there's nothing wrong with it. If you just sign, there's nothing wrong with it. If you speak, there's nothing wrong with it. And... She paved a way a way for women, not just women, but deaf women, because it just shows that deaf people aren't stupid because they don't talk and because they can't hear. And like I said, her articles were spoke they spoke out about sign language. And my opinion on her was I think that it's basically what I just said, her impacts. I think she's really courageous and really strong. And she helped sort of begin to change the stigma when it comes to deaf people. Because back then it was deaf and dumb. And that's not true. And because, yeah, she's deaf. But she was so smart. And she did so many things. And um, she was offered a teaching job. She wrote articles. She married two lawyers. And she had a daughter. And she she had a good life. And... My interesting facts, I already mentioned that she went to Missouri School for the Deaf and that she used an alias and that it was Howard Glendon, but what I thought was really cool was that the languages she learned, the fact that she documented the Civil War and she went around and traveled and would write stuff about it, and then she would um, send letters to Lincoln and Grant about the war, and she was super pro- um, Pro Union, and then she studied underneath underneath Alexander Graham Bell, and yeah, I know he's not the best guy, but he is. He basically taught her how to use his vo- use her voice, and that's why she's believes a little bit in oralism. And there are my sources.